he should have been punished and put out of the house, and then when he made things right with his father, that he could come back. But what he was saying was, I want to live with freedom. I don't want any responsibility. I don't want to give honor to my parents. I want to cut all ties with my family. I don't want to develop my inheritance so that it makes more money. I just want the cash. I just want to go spend it. I don't want anything to do with my brother. So this was all against Jewish custom. So they're just looking at Jesus thinking, this is already an odd story. And we cannot really understand. And this is definitely not teaching this son tough love. You know how they tell you tough love. You just cut your children off and you teach them that they're going to make it on their own if they want these type of requests. So they couldn't understand this at all. So then, if you'll notice, the older son has never showed up during this talk. He's still somewhere else. And his duty as the older son was, even if the father has, as the Jewish people would say, has lost his mind and going to give this younger son his inheritance, the older son should have stepped up and said, Now, Dad, I'm keeping your honor. You're not going to do this. But the oldest son is still out here doing his thing somewhere. And so even he didn't keep his father's honor and didn't protect the estate. So in 15, um, chapter 15, verse 13, it says, And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. So he moved rather quickly. And it said that when he gathered all together, what he did was he took everything that was his, turned it into cash. And so even that um, devalued everything that he had because if you want to sell your stuff really fast you can do that but you're not going to get the best price you're probably going to have to take whatever somebody gives you or it's going to be discounted so he's already getting rid of things and he's losing his value he's losing what his father has worked so hard for and has willingly gave it to him and he's just selling it somebody brought his future at a discounted rate isn't that sad and he's not the only one that did that in the Bible. Of course, this is a, just a parable. But he sacrificed his future for his immediate pleasure. And you notice that he went into a far country. He got as far away from his family as he could go. He didn't want his family to know what he was doing. He didn't want his family to know anything about it. And when this actually took place in a Jewish family, what they would do is once that the child was gone, they would hold a funeral, and they would treat the child as if the child was dead. So that's pretty much, even verse 24, it says, For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be married. That, that's because that he was dead to them. And the prodigal comes from a term that actually means wasteful. He scattered his future. He had nothing to show for it. He was irresponsible. And in verse 30, his brother even points out to the father, well, he even wasted his money on harlots. So he was a horrible, horrible sinner. He did vow things. And, I mean, he really is um, the, the lowest um, picture of a sinner that Jesus could have ever depicted. He, he really illustrates him right here. 1514 says, And when he went and he had spent, all there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. So there was a severe famine in that land that was not his fault. That wasn't his fault. Everything else was his fault. He took his money. He squandered it. And if you look back in history, it will tell you that even in times of famine um, during this time, that they would eat garbage, sandals, stray animals. Um, they would eat really nasty things. Um, they would even eat body parts and stuff after operations and stuff. It, it was really gross what they would do during famines. And so he had found himself in this state. In Luke 15, 15 it says, And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. Well, he now has become a beggar. He's joined himself, or rather blued himself, to this citizen, which is a Gentile. So he's now hanging on to this person. He's in this country that's despised. They're not even his people. And this isn't even a job. 
The guy didn't even say, if you go and feed the pigs and the swan, I will give you some money or I'll give you food. He, didn't, he just wanted rid of him. So he said, you just go over there and feed the pigs. So it wasn't even a legitimate hiring. And so this was a shame for both himself now and even back to his father. Because everybody said, no, look what his father did. He allowed him to have all his money. Now he's out wasting it. Now he's truly sunk to the bottom. He's out there. He's a beggar. He's attached to some Gentile that wants rid of him and threw him out in the pigs. He's in a faraway country. And now what's he got? So in 1516, it says, And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swan did eat, and no man gave unto him. So he's out here feeding these pigs. No one's giving him food. He's fighting with the pigs to get their food. And, and this is just a really bizarre story. You can't even imagine doing that yourself. I mean, I could not imagine being this low in life that I'm out there fighting with the pigs in their trough to get their food. So as I began to think about this story, I thought I can see why that they considered this was one of the greatest short stories ever written. Because if you can put yourself here, this is just really interesting. And one man put it, he went from wealth to sticking his face between snouts in a Gentile's place and starving them. And this was beyond comprehension. In 1517 it says that when he came to himself, so he yes. must not have been thinking very clearly, then one day he's, he'd come to himself. And he said, you know what? Even the hired servants at my father's house, they have bread enough to eat and enough to spare. And here I am perishing with hunger. So he thought, I'm dying of hunger. I can't beat the pigs. This is a sinner in the ultimate stage of desperation. He's poor, destitute, hungry, dying, and he's in a hopeless situation. I just can't even imagine being in this poor young man's place. So what the lesson that Jesus was trying to say is, look, sin is rebellion against God. God's going to give you that freedom to choose your sin. You have that freedom to, to do whatever you want to do. And you can take your sin as far as you want to take it. Yes. That young man took his to a faraway country. He squandered everything he had, but he had the free will to do it. And God will let you do that. And you can take it any direction that you want. But he had no relationship to the ones that gave him life. To the ones that really loved him. And everything that he needed was at home. So when you look at sin... It's a disdain for God's people, God's rules, God's authority, God's will, His goodness, His resources. Sin makes you want to run from God. It don't want to make you run toward it. Right. It doesn't make you want to have any responsibility or accountability to God. And it dishonors God. It takes all the loving gifts that God gives you and you just wasted in life. It, people wasted in lust, reckless living. Um, it will take you to the actual brink of death, just like this young man. He's starving to death. He's actually about to die. If he don't get some food at some point in time, he's going to die. So anything that's outside of God is going to leave you exhausted, hungry, and desperate. So how is the Father going to deal with this person? You know, he's, here he is. And he's, he's wanting to come home. He, he's disrespected his father. He's been immoral to the max. He's violated every rule. He went to a despised place with despised people. And now that the shame is still not over. There's a shameful repentance that's going to come. 1517 says, and when he came to himself about the hired servants, he thought, you know, if I can just go and, and be a hired servant, they just work day by day. They just, um, they work for a day and they get their pay at the day's end. And most of them just got minimum wage. And he thought, if I can just do that, I'm not asking to go back into my house. I'm not asking to go back and have all of this stuff. I just want to just be able to, to kind of make it and make minimum wage and work and try to make restitution with my father. In 15, 18.